Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog and in today's episode we're going to be fitting a new dashboard no we're not we're going to be fitting a new speedo to my abaf and the speedo in question is going to be one of those tft display ones the nice ones that you get in the um well in a model that you request it as an optional extra looks much better than a standard one so we're going to do that in today's episode so let's get on and take a look and go through that process Okay, so here's the clock in question. So basically you've got your rev counter there, your fuel gauge, and then your speedo in the middle. This one is specifically for an abaf. You can just get a standard one and fit them in any car. Um, so we're gonna go through the process. Um, I got this one from eBay. I think I paid about 160 pound for it actually, quite cheap in comparison to if you bought a brand new one. Um, and it is really just a mod. It, the car didn't need it. I just thought it looked better and I wanted to see how it works now this is going to have some mileage from the previous car in there so we're going to have to do what we call a proxy alignment and i've got some software um, that i'm going to use to actually do that so we'll record what the current mileage on the car is and we'll make sure that the new mileage that goes onto the car matches that just to make sure that the car mileage is correct so let's go and take it off we'll take the old clock off first and then we'll get this in and we'll plug in the um software so we can reprogram this okay so welcome back to our little 500 valentino that's what we call him and before we get into the car can i just say how much i love this color this color is called campavola gray it's even got an italian sound right first thing we need to do is we need to record the current mileage of the car before we start taking the dashboard apart so Ooh. something is dead in the car but there's our mileage okay so our current mileage is 59.985 so that's our mileage so remember that and now we're going to start taking this apart oh okay so before we do any work we're going to disconnect this battery Here we go, and that will make sure we don't blow anything up because we tend to do that, but now we won't. Okay, so the first job we've got to do is we've got to remove the cowling. Okay, so to get to this, we need to first of all remove top and bottom cowling. So there's two bolts in the bottom here that need to be removed, and I've got a range of my Sonic screwdrivers here i've actually got some flatheads they, they are phillips but when i'm using this phillips one here it's um turn and i don't want to damage the nuts so let's use some flatheads and then we'll get the um bottom cowling off first and then we'll work on the the top one i'll do that off camera and then uh, we'll take it to the next stage okay so once you remove these two screws um, and they are Phillips screws but these ones are slightly worn that's the reason why I had to use my flat heads uh, once you do that then this bottom cowling should just just come away and, and come off like that okay and then there are two screws one on this side and one on that side now once you remove these two screws over here and again they are Phillips now this top piece will just come away like so okay then if we drop down the steering wheel that should then expose a couple of there'll be like a couple of torque screws probably can't see now let's get some light on that there you go so there's a torque screw just here i believe that's a t9 according to love 500 it's a t9 um torque so we're going to remove that and we also need to remove this panel on the side here and actually just pull out like that and that allows us to then just take the dashboard out so i'll get some i'll get the old torques on there we'll loosen that and there's a third one just underneath here so you need this DM steering wheel down once we release that that should release the clock and allow us to pull that away okay so once we remove the two we remove the two um, t9 torque 
um, screws there and then there's one just underneath the housing here uh, once you take that away then the housing should just come away always challenging to do this with one hand there we go there we go so it just comes off like that and then that's going to expose the clocks so for the clocks we literally have just got a screw down here one on the other side two on the top and then that's going to release the whole clock okay so those four bolts that secure the clock in space they are a t20 torque and once you remove those four then the clock is free to come off and then at the back of the clock you've just literally got <laughs> one clip holding it in place that will release the um, clock and then you can swap them out and that is it the clock is now out we have the clock here so this is the old one absolutely nothing wrong with this clock so I will be keeping it back because you never know when you might need a spare one but that's now free and we can now add our new clock okay so the new clock is now in place it's in place loosely plugging it in is exactly the reverse order you just put in the multi plug like that and once that's plugged into place then it's literally just a case of slotting the the clock in place right let's turn it on and see what we get here you go doesn't that look better already okay so here we see our fuel gauge that's working fine and our temperature gauge is working fine as well let's do some indicators left right indicator and main beams everything is working just as it should which is great so the only thing that's wrong now is the fact that the mileage if you look at the mileage at the bottom there you'll see that in this car it's 13,070 miles so it's taken out from a relatively newish car so we need to put that right and the way we need to do that is we need to use a um, multi scan which we have a licensed copy and of course we need to to do that we need to plug into the OBD uh, connector so on the Fiat's and the 500's the OBD connector is on the driver's side just behind this panel here and this panel just pulls off like that okay and then down below you'll see the OBD connector that you just need to connect up to your system to your OBD connector so I'm going to do that right now and then I'll show you what it looks like once we've connected up Okay, so it's all connected up now. And notice I've got this little yellow dongle. That's because Multiscan will actually request that. Now, the uh, OBD connector I got is an OBD Link SX. This kit I got from uh, Jendan. And I'm going to show you the kit a little bit later on. But Jendan, excellent supplier of, um, of scanning tools, have never let me down. They provided my tool for my Audi and now, uh, they were my first choice for uh, this kit here, the multi-scan. So I'm going to fire up multi-scan and um, you'll see it come up on my screen now. And this is a licensed copy of the software. And so there we are. So we're going to, I'm going to uh, connect up now. You're going to see the screen, full screen on, on, on your video. And we're going to go through the process of resetting the mileage on this car the way it should be to the what we we saw earlier on okay so welcome to um multi-scan 4.5 as you can see on screen this is a registered copy of the software now when you plug in your connector your obd connector you need to set it up first so you click on the settings here okay and then on here you've got three tabs or four tabs so we're going to go to the interface and then we need to select our connector so like i said my one is called it's an obilink sx so obilink is here now there are a range of adapters that you can use so you can use these are all available uh, for this so the first thing you need to do is set up your scanner so you do that and then you select the port once you've installed the software 
the software will also prompt you to install the drivers for the two connectors that um, or OBD main connectors that uh, Gen Dan send down with you so once you do that you click on test and it will do a scan and it will tell you that it's okay and then what it's compatible with so this red cable is compatible with ELM 3271.4 then should connect properly once we do that we can then connect up so we select our vehicle so Fiat and then we've got our multi-jet above 1.4 and then we go into body so you start off with the engine you select your engine in this case we're doing a, a body uh, alignment so we click on the body and then we set proxy alignment procedures my car is a 2013 so we don't want to do that so we select this one here and then we can we select on connect now it says press y to connect to um well actually it's telling me first of all before we go into that connect adapter free or yellow so that's this adapter here that you can see on screen now okay so that's important and you get a whole pack with these like i said i'll show you in a second so going back to our screen we're going with we're going to click yes and then it's going to connect up and then we wait for that to happen and then once it connects up it's going to take us into the next screen okay so it's telling us what's wrong it's telling us that the radio receiver has been removed that's correct because we've removed it from aftermarket and it's telling me that the dash mode is also has failed okay so it's the dash that we want to um, resolve now down the bottom somewhere if I click on the uh, a graph actually not the graph we want adjustments here we go so on the adjustment these, this screen here is telling us everything that is connected up onto that. So it's telling me all the all the different systems that are there. And uh, what we want to do is now, obviously, we're going to look at the system that isn't present. Let's just, just try and find the display type. Oh, the dashboard. This is when you really should be doing this kind of thing in advance. So we want the proxy alignment, so there you are, that's what we want, proxy alignment procedure. So this is what's going to be used to align our, so our, our dashboard. So we're going to click on the execute button down here and then that should sort out our, our mileage. So if we click on that now and then we click on Y, it should now go ahead and realign that module okay so that's now completed it's telling me to turn the key off so we've turned the key off on the car and then it tells me to continue so if I turn the key back on now And now it has changed the mileage, but it hasn't changed it. It's not correct. It's telling me that it's 21,000 kilometers. So I'm going to run the procedure again and see um, if it does it correctly. At this point, I have to put my hand up because I made a mistake. You see, when you do the initial setup of multi -E 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 ECU scan, that box where you put the um, your OBD connection in, there's a box down below, a little tip box, and that little tip box is for the UK um, industry to select mileage. I never tick that box, so I um, need to go back and tick that box, and then we should be okay. And, um, and then, I, because the mileage is so low, I don't have to run the proxy alignment, although I, I probably will, maybe, but um, I don't have to because I can now put the correct mileage because it's higher than the mileage that the clock is. Let's go back to the video. Let's get to sorting out this issue here where we have kilometers and changing that back to mileage. So looking back at our screen, let's go and sort out our settings and then you can see exactly what needs to be done, what box you need to tick 
to make sure that it picks up miles instead of kilometers. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we go down here to settings and we click on settings. Now we did the interfaces here and we select our OBD, which we've already tested, but where we need to change that um, kilometers to miles is in units here. So here you see it's setting for kilometers per hour and miles per hour. So if we click on miles per hour, then that is correct. Everything else is fine. So we've got bars and PSI, we'll keep it a bar, kilograms and pounds. Uh, is that metric meter? I don't know what that is. And foot per square inch or something like that, but we keep it where it is. Um, and then we click on the OK. So now that that's set, we can now connect up. So we're going to connect. It's telling me to use the yellow adapter, which we have. And now we are connected up. Okay, so it is still stuck on kilometers, but rather than me just spending more and more time on that, I'm going to fix that later. It's definitely going to be a software issue, um, so I can fix that. Um, so let's get this dashboard back together, screwed back, and then we can see what it looks like as the finished article. Okay, so we've put all the trim back now. Um, we haven't done the underneath cowling yet, and there's a reason for that, because I'm going to run a cable for my ignition line for the stereo. But in terms of the top cowling, everything is now back in place. And the Speedo is back working. So like I said, it is in kilometers, I know that, and I'm gonna fix that at a later date. But for now, it works exactly as we want it to. Um, and we've now done this conversion. So I think that looks pretty good in terms of um, improvement to the dash. It's achieved exactly what we wanted to do, and we've got all the functions to work. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, so just a little bit about the kit that I use. It's uh, an official multi-ESU scan kit from Gendan. Gendan are the best company as far as I'm concerned in the UK for supplying OBD kits. They have a comprehensive range in stock included for Porsche, um, Volkswagen Audi Group and of course Fiat, not, to, not excluding Ford and other manufacturers. They are extremely helpful and very quick. I ordered this on Wednesday, it was or Thursday, it was here on Friday, next day. The team there are, are like I said, very helpful and um, I'll put a link in below for um, their website. But like I said, if you're looking for anything OBD related, Gendan are the site to get your information and your kit from. Okay, so that's it for this week. Uh, partially successful. We've got the TFT screen in there, just a couple of things to sort out and I will give you an update. Um, don't forget um, our sponsor, uh, Tool Maniac, our main sponsor. They're the supplier of the um, S9 toolkit, so check them out on the link below. Okay, so midweek we've got our Q&A coming up. Uh, thanks for those who have submitted questions and if you still want to submit questions for the Q&A you still got a little bit of time so put in your quest in the in the uh, comments below Q&A and then your question that you want to ask and then we'll have that for you mid-week so that's about wrap this up for this week and don't forget to subscribe down here and click the bell notification and if you are a casual viewer become a subscriber because that really helps us on the channel it helps us to go you've heard it before I know but we have to keep saying that to encourage you guys to subscribe. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Look forward to your comments down below and we will see you midweek for our Q&A.